So one of the things that I like to do is to take an insect over to the scanning electron microscope. And looking at it, um, one of the neat things is when you zoom in, you know, there's more features that you, you, can, you can discover from that. So looking at it zoomed out, you probably didn't notice that there was little hairs on the antenna. You notice the antenna, but now you can actually see there's little hairs on there. If you notice the background that this ant is sitting on, actually is kind of striped there. So if we take and zoom in on that, okay, we took and made these stripes. So we took and made these by going down to Argonne National Laboratory, uh, working with some very talented scientists and technicians. Uh, my post postdoc, uh, Dr. Lori Lepic, uh, has, has worked down there to take and make structures like this. And these stripes are made out of diamond. The, the, the diamond isn't my end goal, though. I'm just using that as a tool to take and make these, these wires that are hanging off here. So these are some of the very first nickel wires that we made uh, using this technique here. And that's, that's the real goal of, of this. But you can see, you know, just by the perspective there, you see how small uh, the, the parts are that we're working with. So, and I apologize for this, I, f I did not bring the external speakers. We're gonna take and need everybody to be quiet. We're gonna take and Center for Nanoscale Materials have developed a new, very simple method for making large quantities of patterned nanowires. Once the electrode has been created, this method can be performed on an ordinary laboratory benchtop without the need for a clean room. The thin patterned electrode is comprised of several layers. Zooming in to see the detail, there are two layers of ultra nano crystalline diamond, also known as UNCD over a silicon wafer substrate. The upper layer is insulating so that any ions from the metal solution that impinge upon the surface can diffuse away and they will not self-assemble into solid deposits. The underlying material is made from conductive, nitrogen-doped, ultra-nanocrystalline diamond. Only the edge of this layer and not the top surface are exposed to the solution so that when the potential is applied to the electrode, the metal ions that come in contact with the nanoelectrode layers are reduced. This forms metal wires at the edge of the conductive layer. One advantage of this method is that the wire diameter is not determined by the template at the beginning of the experiment. The thickness of the nanoelectrode determines the minimum thickness of the resulting wire. By electrodepositing for a long period of time, the wire continues to grow, resulting in large, easy-to-characterize wires. Using this technique, any particular material that can be electrodeposited can be formed into patterned nanowires. Once the conditions are found which give smooth deposits, the duration of electroplating can be reduced to give smaller nanowires having a predictable diameter and require more difficult methods of characterization. The patterns of the UNCD electrodes are made in a clean room by a plasma etching process resulting in holes through both layers that expose only the edge of the conductive nitrogen-doped UNCD layer. Again, this cross-section view shows that the nano-electrode layer is exposed at the bottom of each hole. Application of a potential when the electrode is immersed in an ionic precursor solution will result in the ions forming a deposit having the shape of the patterned holes. A commercial polymer blend that is normally used for cleaning dirt off of delicate optical surfaces is then applied to the surface of the electrode. The polymer seeps in all of the holes and adheres to the deposited wires. Once the solvent from the polymer solution is driven off, the polymer becomes a microscopic handle that allows the wires to be lifted away from the UNCD. The diamond has very low adhesion to most materials, including the polymer and any contamination. So this polymer helps clean the electrode and eliminates the requirement for a clean room facility to manufacture engineered nanomaterials. Once the
the wires have been lifted away from the diamond template, the template is restored to the pristine state, just like when it was originally manufactured in a clean room. Duplicate sets of wires can be made in a matter of a few minutes simply by repeating the electrode deposition process. The next set of wires can be deposited as microwires or nanowires of the same material or a completely different material. This simplifies the deposition technique from a process that is normally only done in clean rooms by highly trained scientific staff into a technique that can be performed by practitioners with less training and using low-tech facilities. This is an innovation that is amenable to Main Street manufacturing. Okay. How well could you hear that back there? Okay, a little bit. Okay, so my apologies for that. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll uh, kind of go through this. Uh, but uh, so the, these, these last images here are CAD telluride nanowires. Cadmium telluride is a semiconductor that is eventually we'll, uh, we're looking at making a new type of solar cell uh, using that, uh, that type of, of semiconductor. Oops. Okay, so in short, what we have is we have an insulating wafer and we have a layer on top of there that's conductive. The conductive uh, layer is made from ultra nanocrystalline diamond. And ultra nanocrystalline diamond is a, is a very durable uh, substrate. It is something that uh, you know, doesn't abrade very easily. It is resistant to almost all, all uh, chemicals. And uh, we can take and, and form it into thin layers like that. Now it's pretty easy to grow thin layers of, of any sort of material. You know, we were talking about how hard it is to take and make small, uh, small items, but it's pretty easy to take and make thin layers. So for example, it, in the wintertime when it snows here, um, you know, snow is essentially kind of like small particles coming down, very similar to how atoms might come down onto a surface. And so how do you, how do you end up with a very thin layer of, of snow? Just don't let it snow for very long. And that's, uh, so we get the conductive layer um, that has a little bit of nitrogen in. Then we put another layer of diamond, only we don't have nitrogen in it, and it's insulating. So now we have one material, so we don't have to worry about uh, compatibility of those materials. Um, it's very durable, and it's the cross-section that we're primarily interested in. So now by taking simply attaching an electrode uh, or uh, a conduct, uh, to attach onto that uh, conductive layer there, put it into a dissolved metal solution. So think of taking almost any, any metal that's been dissolved in acid or a metal salt uh, and then uh, apply a voltage to it and we can take and get the, the wires to grow right at that interface there. So now if we want to take and make patterned shaped nanowires, what we end up doing is starting off with a bare, bare wafer, put in our layer of, of, of conductive diamond, our insulating diamond. Now if we want to have uh, square shaped uh, uh, nanowires, we take and cut square shaped holes. If we want uh, round uh, patterns, stars, bars, whatever shape we want, well, we can take and, and cut down into the diamond there. What this does is once we have an electrode like this, this gives us a complete manufacturing cycle. So something as simple as a baby food jar with an applied voltage, it could be a, a battery or you know, a little fancier tool uh, to control the, the voltage. We can then take and, and reduce the metal ions just the same way as a, as a jeweler electroplates a ring. And what that's going to do is wherever it was exposed to the solution, we end up with the nanowires. We then take and stamp it onto a sticky polymer in my group, what we've done all of our research and development with is scotch tape. 
So we simply take and put a piece of scotch tape down and we're able to take and remove up to 100% of the nanowires and unlike all the other techniques for making pattern nanowires, we regenerate the original electrode in the exact same condition as we started with. So now this entire process takes less than, uh, less than two minutes and we can go right back into that baby food jar and make another copy of it. So instead of having to go into a clean room, uh, like the picture that we saw at the very beginning, and a uh, you know, multi-million dollar clean room and spending anywhere from a, a half a day to a week in the clean room to take and make another copy. Ours is already made, we can go back in there um, and uh, take and make these, these wires over again. So how do we take and make these electrodes? Start off with a bare wafer, make those uh, uh, the two different layers of diamond, we apply some photoresist, we pattern it using light. We then develop it, so whatever, whatever has uh, either been hit by light or not hit by light, we can get that to dissolve away, and that exposes the, the diamond down below. We then cover over everything with a thin layer of a metal, nickel, titanium, uh, something that's going to t uh, be resistant uh, to uh, the next step uh, here. So what we do now is, you notice there's plastic underneath some of that metal. We dissolve the plastic and that gives us open holes in the shape that we want those wires to be. If we expose this then to an oxygen plasma, so oxygen uh, in the uh, form of plasma is very reactive and it's going to go down and it's going to chew up the diamond. So diamond is made out of carbon. Carbon reacts with oxygen to give carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Both of those are gas. So they diffuse away and expose more diamond underneath and the process continues all the way down to the, the wafer. The nickel on the other hand ends up uh, reacting with the oxygen forming nickel oxide. Nickel oxide is a solid remains behind and it protects the underlying diamond. Quick dip in, in acid to remove the, the metal and we're left with our template. Electro deposit the wires and end up uh, painting on or, or simply sticking down with a piece of scotch tape to remove those uh, wires, regenerating the template. So this is, so the, the work of making these electrodes is all done down at Argonne National Laboratory. And one of the things that uh, when I came here, I wanted to take and do this type of research. I wanted to involve undergraduates. I wanted to create opportunities for them to, to get involved, working with some of the top scientists in the world um, in a, a national laboratory setting. Um, so, and a number of the, my students that have gone down there worked at Argonne really have earned the respect of uh, people that are in the top of their field. Um, so it's neat for the students. It's also neat for, for Argonne um, in, in getting more people involved in the sciences. Uh, so, so here's the cartoon version. This is what it actually looks like. So we use the scanning electron microscope to take a picture and we see that uh, you know, here's the, the nickel on the top. This top layer here is the insulating diamond. Underneath is the nitrogen doped diamond. And down below is the, is the silicon there. So question remains, can we take the, the uh, pattern like that plus the, the baby food jar and get the nanowire? And indeed we can. So what we see here is palladium. Palladium is one of the, the metals that's very similar to platinum has some interesting properties for making hydrogen sensors out of them. Um, so since the, the thickness of that first layer of diamond is very thin, um, we're, we're limited to that thickness. That's about the thinnest we can take and make the, our wires. But we can take and make them well under 100 nanometers. Okay. If that was the only thing I could do with my technology, I'd be dead in the water here. So 
working with undergraduate students. I start off, um, many of the, the students that I have, have hired in my laboratory start off as, as freshmen. Um, and they don't have, they've not been exposed to the skills yet to take and run a, a quarter million dollar scanning electron microscope. So what I do is we take and, and dunk down into the baby food jar and it may start off like that, but by growing for a longer period of time, you're assembling more and more atoms down onto the surface until it gets large enough um, that we can actually see it with the naked eye. So we, we can prove that we're taking and putting something down onto the surface. We then take and uh, cut back the amount of time. So we, we have the amount of time, we have the amount of time again, we gradually get down to so you can't see it with the naked eye. We can see it underneath a, an optical microscope. Optical microscopes are really about as easy as using a pair of binoculars. Students feel comfortable with that. So I teach them the electric chemistry. Uh, the optical microscopy comes pretty easily. easily. And I have them cut down the, the, the time again, cut it down again until it gets so small we can't see it with an optical microscope. In other words, a wavelength of light is too big to carry the information of how small that uh, wire is. So at that point, they've made the investment, so I make the investment with them, and I teach them how to use the scanning electron microscope. You know, what a nice little resume builder that is to you know, be able to put down a bullet point that you've driven a, a quarter million dollar scanning electron microscope. Um, so so this, this image here shows uh, being able to lift those wires off of the, off of the template. Um, so these wires here are rather broken, and the reason why they're broken is in order to get this, this uh, uh, view here right at that peeling interface, we really had to bend that, uh, that uh, layer of polymer back, you know, really sharply, and we pulled on it and stretched it, and that's why the wires are broken. But if we take and remove these in the normal way, um, the wires are all completely intact. Um, so um, you can see the, the, the template here. This is the diamond, uh, the, the wires uh, coming out. Um, this technique is, it's possible to take and, and deposit uh, almost any material that can be electrodeposited. So if you can electroplate it, we can take and make nanowires out of this. And uh, so to date we've done uh, over 25 different materials uh, as, uh, as microwires and nanowires. But if you're going to take and make something, you need to be able to make something out of more than one material. So if you, if you think of almost any useful device that you've ever, ever laid hands on, whether it's a remote like this or a pen, you know, pen is made up of, of multiple different materials. So we've got to be able to assemble things, and we've got to assemble it at the same scale as those uh, wires are made. So what you see here is an individual wire, and if we use a special tool attached to the scanning electron microscope, we can take and image that wire and be able to identify the chemical elements uh, or the elements that take and make up that wire. So what we have here is on this end, it's pure nickel, and on the other end, it's pure copper. So what we have is an alloy gradient in between there. So we're starting to develop the complexity that we need to take and make uh, useful, useful devices. So a device like this, two metals that are conducted, uh, co connected at a single point, is a thermocouple. You can measure temperature with this. So what would you maybe want to take and, and measure the temperature of that's that small? How about a single cell? You know, be able to, to take and probe individual cells uh, to be able to, to determine what temperature they are. Um, you know, small little, little devices can, that can take and, and uh, do that. Um, 
Another way of building up the complexity. So here are our copper wires. Here are some nickel wires. If we take and remove the copper wires, uh, we end up with, uh, with the, the wires supported in an array like that. We also have